Hello, Jason here. So this is going to be a super quick tutorial again today and it's just a way of having one set of keyframes that you can trigger every time there's a layer marker as you can see here. So what I've done is I've done a very simple recreation of a animation I did for a client not too long ago where it would pulse like this on beat with a audio track so every time there was a crash of the symbol, it would pulse. So I built it with keyframes every time there was that beat or that crash. And then the client would come back and they would have changed the audio track. And I would have to go through and manually move all those sets of keyframes to the point I wanted. And they kept changing the music track and I kept having to do this. And eventually I just found a way where I can just have one set of keyframes like I have here, which is just on the camera. So these four circles are spaced out in the Z position. And then the camera, the keyframes just has the camera move in and move back out, giving that pulse effect. And rather than having lots of these sets of keyframes, there's an expression where every time there's a layer marker, you can see here, it triggers those keyframes. So as you see, as it passes, it triggers those keyframes. I can move them anywhere I want. I can delete them, I can add them. And as soon as I move those, those pulses will also change with the position. So let's have a look at how this has been created. And I'm just gonna do a quick, very simple square. I thought we would just do a rotation. So on any property you want really, We'll just go to yet yeah, rotation. Let's just move forwards half a, half a second and let's just rotate round to 90 just so it finishes in the same position as it starts. So rotate 90. Let's just do some quick, just easing. Just like everything have a bit, just like everything to have a bit of easing just makes it look a bit nicer. So let's just do quick graph editor. Let's have a quick look at that. There you go, it's very simple. I might even make that a bit quicker. And there we go. So let's say you want that to rotate multiple times rather than copy, paste, copy, paste, paste, and have, have it done like this. Then later on, having to sort of grab each pair and move them along. And if you haven't got ease in, for example, it's hard to know which pairs what, especially if they're all sort of like closer together. It's hard to remember which one's paired with which one, and it gets very messy very quickly. So just delete those. And all we need to do is grab this expression that I've put below for you. So if we just copy the whole thing back to our composition and hold Alt or Option and click on the stopwatch next to the property we've keyframed. Click. And then in the expression box, we're just going to paste that expression. And that is it done. So if we click off that, nothing will happen because we have no layer markers. So as you'll see, even those two keyframes don't do anything nothing happens whatsoever. So what we do is we right click on our layer, go down to markers, add marker. And there's our marker that we can click and move. And if we just put it here, you'll see that marker triggers those two keyframes. And if you do have the extended keyboard, the shortcut is the asterisk on the um, numerical end. So press that, that's the shortcut to get the layer marker. Otherwise you just need to right click, add marker, and then do them manually wherever you want them and move them. So wherever we have these markers, our square will rotate. And there we go. So what you can even do is if you wanted, say, scale as well. So let's go to scale. Let's have both up so we can see the timings. Let's just scale that up to 140. Let's just get rid of those ease in so we can have them the same. Ease in, ease out. And then we're just going to hold Option or Alt on the scale, paste that same expression, click off. And now it will scale and rotate every time it hits those keyframes. So what we might want to do is on the scale is have it there, 
just so we can have it finish back on 100 when it gets to the end of that rotation. I'll just leave it like that. There we go. So you can have it on multiple properties, but just know that you can't you can't have multiple um, layer markers. So you can have one layer marker for all sets of keyframes. If you wanted the um, scale and rotation to be um, separate, you would have to have another layer, an adjustment layer, for example, where you would um, where you would change the very first layer, this layer, and you would pick whip the adjustment layer. And you'll click off. And as you see now, the scale doesn't change, but we can, on our adjustment layer, add some layer markers, and then that will be the one that affects the scale. And there we go. Please let me know in the comments if you find this useful. I know it's a quick tutorial, but it is um, very time friendly. So enjoy, and I will see you soon. Thanks for watching.